Oh yeah. What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we are going to be fitting a roll cage to my R34 Skyline. The cage is something I've had sitting around for a little while, um, but obviously I wanted to wait until I uh, had it on the channel to, to do the install. Um, so it's a Cusco half roll cage, four point, going to allow us to keep the back seats in, uh, keep it a real street car, and also keep the, works probably best with the recliners as well. Let's get clearing up because there's a bit of a mess in here. Make some space and uh, get the car in. Make sure we've got something that's dry and with enough space around the vehicle to be able to work because we're going to be taking the seats out, uh, we're going to be fitting up the cage and test fitting it in there and then we're going to be making up some spreader plates uh, which we'll go through in a bit more detail in a little bit when we're making them to um, spread the weight of the, the cage if it should ever be, be used in an accident. Hopefully not, fingers crossed. So we've got some lights on the go, we're going to get a heater on the go and the next most important thing after that is music. So we've got this this Bose system that we're going to use. Uh, only small speakers, but we put out quite a lot of, of sound. They've got um, a phono connection there, which the other one we've got all the way over there. We've just literally bought up some bits of woods and mounted them into it, cut them up, screwed them to, the, to a base and that should be sturdy enough to hold them. Uh, so now let's give it a, a little test fit and wire up. So we've got a 10 meter phono cable. We're gonna split this in two. Just need one run into each one. And split it out to each of these. Okay, stereo system's in place, so uh, time to give it a test. Let's give this a uh, little try and see if it works. Oh yeah! Okay, that's the music set up and uh, sort of temporarily in place. We've put some gaffer tape on the walls to uh, keep that. So let's get crack on and uh, start fitting this half roll cage. The reason I've gone for a half roll cage is because this is really going to be sort of a street car. Um, we'll be using the occasional track day maybe uh, once I've got the diff sorted and, uh, and some lot mods sorted but um, mainly it's going to be going to be you know a street car so uh, half cage sort of suits and fits in well with the recliners and, and things like that but I still want a bit of, uh, bit of safety in there. So this is a Cusco Safety 21 uh, cage pretty easily identifiable by its color mainly um, this one has actually come out of an r34 gtr i know that because the rear covers that are come with it which are cut out for the uh for the bars to go through um are of the gtr fabric now i know there are some mounting differences between gts gtsts and or gts gtts and gtrs um but hopefully the bottom mounting here and the back mounting there is the same. I'm pretty sure it is. I think it's to do with the seat mounting in the center tunnel because of the gearbox, but we'll find out in a second. So let's crack on and get the uh, seats out. Pretty much all Japanese cars just require a, a 14 mil uh, and you've got four bolts. One here, one on the back, one on the far side, one there. The one on the far side, I think is mounted to the, to the, to the tunnel. So we'll have a look at those. So let's crack on. So we've got the four bolts out. Um, so it's time to lift the chair out. Now, what I find the best way to do is to actually pull the top out first uh, and then lift it out from there. Otherwise, you end up scratching a lot of the, the base on here. And obviously, when you're lifting it out, you want to be careful you don't catch anything on the side of the vehicle. So just have it as open, wind down, as wide as possible, so you can make as much room as possible. So 
So the next thing to do would have been taking the back seats out, but I've already done that because uh, I've got some other bits to do later on with some wiring and stuff. Um, and what I found was this coin. You'll find a lot of Japanese vehicles, they'll put a coin inside the vehicle. Now, I assume this is for good luck, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if you do know, let me know down in the comments below uh, because it's, um, it's always confused me. And a lot of cars I've had, it's either been under the back seat uh, or actually under the carpet, under the front seat as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a strange place. It couldn't have just fallen underneath the carpet. It could have fallen underneath the seat, but it couldn't have fallen underneath the carpet. But you usually find one coin. Now, I thought it was a five yen coin was traditionally what's done um, for some reason of Goen being a uh, homophone or something else, but um, this is a 10 yen, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's different for different people, whatever their, is their lucky one, but let me know if you know. Either way, we're going to keep it in there because, uh, you know, JDM, yo. So we're also going to remove this bracket here, which is for the seatbelt, and pull the carpet back just to check there's nothing underneath here where our mounting points would be. The cage is actually going to sit on top of the carpet because we're going to keep the interior, um, but we just want to make sure it feels like there's some plastic under there, so whatever that is, we'll have to take that out to make sure it mounts solid. <laughs> Thought process we might be able to do with the driver's seat in. That's not the case. Let's put that out. Once the thing's in the rough area that you want it, um, it's actually sprung a little bit, so it springs out. So we're going to get a ratchet strap, put it around it, and just pull it in ever so slightly so that it can uh, sit where we want it and bolt down, and then obviously have the, the, the back bars in the right place as well. Um, the reason we've done that now is because when if you try and put the spring on first, you'll really struggle to get the cage in the car. Is we've got a small wiring loom that runs here that just seems to be the seatbelt uh, pre-tensioner by the looks of it, which will relocate up a little bit. So what we've got over this side is this quite thick wiring loom uh, that's probably running back to the rear lights, fuel pump, all that sort of stuff, the rear wiper motor that was now taken out, and obviously all the bits up here as well. Um, so we'll take out the plastic part and move the loom up and out, and that can sit on top of the cage when we're done. Okay, so we've got the rear part of the frame in up here as you can see and I've just mounted in the side brackets there for uh, the for the rear braces just to see up where they fit and where they sit on the back I'm going to measure up here make sure it's the same each side and then we'll measure back there to make sure they're the same each side then we'll mark up where our holes are going to be uh, and then we can really look at uh, the cage coming out and start drilling up some holes after that we're going to do the spreader plates which will sit the underside of these would be roughly the same size as those to, to help disperse the weight from underneath. So we've marked out the holes where it's going to go. Um, so it's just a case of marking them um, with a punch and drilling it out. So we're going to use hit through screwdriver and hammer to mark out what we need to do. And then we'll use a drill uh, on progressive bits. So we'll start off with a, a 5mm working our way up to a 9mm because we're using M8 bolts. Um, to go through. So I forgot to mention, but we want to make sure is that the underside of the car is clear as well. So quite a lot of cars have fuel lines or brake lines that run through um, the middle of the underside of the car. Generally they run closer to the centre of the car, so it's more if you drill in for maybe seat mountings and stuff like that, you might notice it. Um, but obviously always check before you drill <laughs> uh, that the place you're drilling hasn't got something in there. With most of those lines, they can be moved slightly. Um, they'll be on brackets and you can move the bracket over. So, um, so you haven't got to worry about it. You can still drill in the same place, but make sure you move them all first. Otherwise, you're looking at a line that runs most likely in one piece from front and back to the vehicle, which Obviously, it's quite expensive and quite a big job to, to change. Trust me, I've done it once. So we've checked the bolts in the back end to make sure that the markings are in the right place. 
Um, so next we've got to jack it up because otherwise if I drill that through, I'm probably going to punch a tire. So let's get that off the ground and the wheels off. No, that isn't my normal jack. Some pikey stole mine for his drift day, so uh, no doubt you'll see a video about that soon. Anyway, it's 200. Just plugged in the rear quarter panel that came with it, which is actually out of a GTR. Uh, this is the interior quarter panel. Now, I uh, did notice that a couple of things are different. One, it's actually shorter than a GT version. Um, so that must mean something to do with the rear arch section for the four-wheel drive train or the rear diff or something like that will be different on a GTR. Um, as you can see here, this one stops here, whereas the GT1 carries on a little bit further. What that means is that where the arch would be different on the back of a GTR, the bolt, the cage bolts a little bit further forward, so ours sits a little bit further back. No problem, but it means we would actually have to modify our own ones of these because they don't fit the front or the back either. So um, we'll have a go at that in a little bit, but we'll get this all bolted in and make sure everything test fits perfect first. But it's looking good, boys. Looking good. Okay, so if you can see in here, right at the top here, there's four, uh, three holes which sit for the rear plate of the cage, what we're going to do, we're going to make a, a template out of cardboard this is around here to mark our holes and we'll mock that off on a bit of 3mm steel and uh, cut that out, put it to shape, drill the holes and use that as our backing plate then we'll, uh, we'll do two of those because they're reversed on the other side and uh, make sure it fits up snug to this inner wheel arch because we need the clearance in this wheel arch for the wheel to sit up high within the arch ok so we've cut out our template Put some holes in it, but we're probably actually going to remark those on here. And what we'll do is just grind this section out, cut it in half, and get that uh, templated up to the car. And then from the back, we'll put the pen through and make sure we've got our holes in exactly the right place. Because obviously, we don't want them to be too wide, we don't want it to slip about at all. Picked up this plate from a uh, local metal supplier, just popped down there, asked them for a bit of offcuts on there, so got it real, real cheap. Got three mil thick, uh, which is probably the sort of the minimum you'd want to go with for a cage. Obviously, for something that's going to be a bit more heavy duty for uh, track days and things, you might want something that's a bit more, a bit thicker. Uh, but three mil will be absolutely fine. And actually, is okay for most uh, MSA reg stuff. There we go, so we've got our two plates sorted. So let's start grinding them down and drilling up the holes. So we've got those rounded off and looking a bit nicer. To be honest, there's no real reason to actually do that. You could have used them as they were, um, but it's a bit of pride of workmanship. And every time I jack up that vehicle and look in the rear arch, I'm gonna see a nicer looking plate than I would if I hadn't done that. Otherwise it'd annoy me, a bit OCD. Okay, so the next bit is really a two man job, but no one else is here today. So what I would wanna do, hold the plate here up against this on the outside and then go around to the inside and mark our holes through with a marker pen. But clearly I can't tape something to the inside of the wheel well because it's still wet and dirty and horrible in there. Um, so what I'll need to do is go and do it in reverse. I'm gonna tape it to the inside colour through with a marker pen from the outside. The holes will be in the same place, just have to flip the thing around. Job done. So you guys are currently sat on the bonnet of my RX-7. I thought we could the best view for the pillar drill, which was uh, very handily propping up the tailgate to this Volvo, because the struts are gone. Uh, let's tighten this up a second. Line up our plate, and then we'll start drilling the, uh, the holes. Marked out on one plate, then I'll use that plate as a template for the other, because they are symmetrical. Safety first. So 
So we start off with a four mil, then we're gonna build up from a, up to a seven, up to a nine, so progressively get bigger, rather than trying to take two bigger chunks out of this, end up uh, ruining something or it just spinning around and cutting my hand off. Okay, so we've got two nice uh, base plates which fit up nicely to our cage. And you can see there the holes match up, which is good. Um, so we'll use those as the base plates underneath. Uh, we've got some bolts which come in, in a bit. So we'll start making the bottom plate brackets for the base of the cage. So this, this goes to the back bar, they'll go down to the, uh, to the floor bars. So we cut the second plate and I am so glad I managed to do it with this grinding disc because look how much is left. Managed to do the last cut with that disc. Which is lucky because there isn't another disc in this workshop <laughs> that's the last one and the nearest shop to go buy one is like five miles away and the car is in pieces so yes good job so we are going to have to do a slightly different process with this bottom plate because two levels of the, the roll cage actually sit on two separate separate gradients so the back one is nice and flat you can just put a flat plate behind it it's fine this one actually one of the two of the mountain holes sit higher than the other two mountain holes. So there's three ways to handle this. We can either make one flat plate, uh, but what that would do is that tubbed area in the middle is just gonna squish that in on there, and then they'll probably end up coming loose, I would have thought, or, or something like that. We can make two separate plates, so one for one, the hot raised area, one for the lower area, but to me that just doesn't seem as safe. It doesn't seem like it's gonna give the rigidity we needed to and hold in as much as we needed to. So what we're actually gonna do is bend our plate so that it comes down, goes across, and contour, matches the contour of the floor that's on here. So, a bit more effort, but it's gonna look a whole lot neater, it's gonna be a whole lot safer, and that's the point, really. So we had to change that last plan to plan E, um, because we had no real decent way of bending the metal. I was just using a vise and a hammer, uh, and I can't quite get the angles that I want on it. So what I've done is I've made up two separate plates, uh, as you can see under here. On here so a lower plate and a higher plate now I could just leave it like that so what I'm gonna end up doing is welding a plate between them to make it one whole piece on there a bit more structural rigidity in it and uh, will look a lot nicer as well once completed so we'll do that now So there we have it, one fused together, bit of metal, one spreader plate made, two seam welds across there with the joining bit in the middle, and that now just fits up, bolts through, and will hold the pressure from the underside of the cage to stop it from ripping out the floor. So that's it now, all four spreader plates made and in, fitted in the vehicle. Uh, the cage is all now secure in there. Uh, we welded up those bottom bits. There's still a few bits to do, which you'll see on the next episode, uh, where we'll be Cutting down the bolts to make sure they're the right length so they don't poke out through. We'll be um, rust proofing everything that where it's mounted through to make sure we don't start getting anything where the two different metals uh, hit each other on there. And we'll also be doing some bits with the cage as well uh, on that. So uh, stay tuned, I'll see you then.